Okay, uh, 7-4 talks about isentropic processes. Now, obviously, isentropic means constant, oh, sorry, means constant entropy. Isentropic means constant entropy. So processes where entropy is constant. And that's kind of how we can um, jump from state one to state two. If we know the entropy, it's, if it's isentropic, we know the entropy at state one is equal to the entropy at state two. So that gives us more information about what's happening at state two. Then we can find you know anything else that we want to find. All right. So uh, recall this equation um, in the um, I think it was in seven two. The increase in entropy principle. It said that the change in entropy is equal to the integral of this uh, heat transfer, delta Q over T, plus the entropy generation. Now, if we look at these terms, we kind of have three different terms right here. Let's think about when these are zero. <clears throat> when these are zero. All right, this term right here would be zero if S1 is equal to S2, if it is isentropic right if the process is isentropic entropy stays the same so s1 equals s2 now the second term right here when would that be zero well uh, temperature is not going to be zero but if there is no q right if there's no heat transfer then this term right here would be zero this is the entropy change due to heat transfer so let's say this is zero if adiabatic adiabatic right now that, that term is zero if adiabatic when is this term zero this is the entropy generation term that is the measure of irreversibilities so if it is reversible it is zero <clears throat> so now let's think about this equation if we have three terms in this equation if two of those terms is zero, if two of the terms are zero, then the third is zero, right? So if you know, if two of these are true, if it's isentropic and adiabatic, then we know it's reversible. If, if it's isentropic and reversible, we know there's, it's adiabatic. There's no heat transfer. If it is adiabatic and isentropic, we know it's reversible. So if two are true, the third is true. If two are true, talking about isentropic, adiabatic, and reversible, the third is true. Alright, so if we know something is reversible, for example, if it says it is a Carnot heat engine or heat pump or any device, um, or if we say it is the ideal device, or maybe we, we're trying to find like the maximum possible you know, work that we could get done, the maximum possible heat that we could, you know, get done, or the minimum. If we're trying to find, you know, the goal or the theoretical limit, then we know that it is reversible. If it says it's adiabatic, or maybe it says, you know, Q is zero, or maybe it says no heat transfer, or maybe it says uh, it's isolated, right? If it says some of these things, then, you know, it means it's adiabatic. And so if it says both of these things, then we know it is isentropic. Because uh, many of these problems, it's not just going to tell you it's isentropic. It's going to tell you, you're, you're going to notice, oh, there's no Q, and it says it's a Carnot, you know. Or, you know, it, it, there's no heat transfer, and it's asking for the, the maximum, you know, work we can get out of this. Uh, then we know it is isentropic. <clears throat> and if it's isentropic, S2 equals S1. Okay, so let's work out some problems. 
Steam enters an adiabatic turbine <clears throat> at 5 MPa and 450 degrees C, and it leaves at a pressure of 1.4 MPa <clears throat> determine the work output of the turbine per unit mass if the process is reversible. So uh, we're looking at a turbine. <clears throat> we're asked to find the work out. Q plus W equals, uh, you know, this is going to be delta H. It's a turbine. <clears throat> and this is H in minus H out. Uh, so th these are steady flow. It's a steady flow device, a turbine. So, you know, think back to chapter 5, all your steady flow devices. <clears throat> it doesn't say anything about the uh, velocities, kinetic energies, or potential energies. So we're just going to you know, assume that H is the um, most important uh, property. So H is are on the right-hand side. Uh, it said it was adiabatic. So anyway, the work per unit mass is just it's simply going to be H2 minus H1. You know, that's, that's for, for turbines... Uh, a lot of times that's what our e conservation energy equation simplifies down to. So we need to find H2 and H1. Let me think about uh, state 1. State 1, the pressure is 5 MPa and the temperature is 450 degrees C. All right, from those two pieces of information, um, <clears throat> see if you can calculate H1. Look at your property tables, look at that pressure, that temperature, I believe it's superheated. Uh, I've got H1, 3317.2 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, state two, it exits. It says it leaves at a pressure of 1.4 MPa. <clears throat> and that's it. doesn't tell me the temperature. I don't know age. I don't know anything about state two. All right, but... <clears throat> What do we know about state two? I mean, maybe you know you're in this uh, chapter, uh, in this uh, section, but if you didn't know that, it said it was adiabatic turbine, and it said the process is reversible. So if it is adiabatic and reversible, then it is also isentropic. And so if it is isentropic, the S1 that you should calculate here is going to equal the S2 that you're going to calculate here. So uh, go to your property tables. Let's find S1. I've got it to be 6.821 kilojoules per kilogram K. So if my pressure is 1.4 and my entropy is 6.821 kilojoules per kilogram K, Take that to your property tables. First go to, you know, A4. Uh, is A4 the um, pressure table? First go to the pressure table and see if that entropy lies in between the two. If it's too low, it's uh, compressed liquid. If it's too high, it's superheated. Then go to superheated tables. If it's in between, then you're going to have to find the quality to find the H. So um, I'm going to let you uh, go to your property tables and find H2. I've calculated H2 to be 2967.4 kilojoules per kilogram. So the work would be H2 minus H1. The work would be 2967.4 kilojoules per kilogram minus 3317.2 kilojoules per kilogram. My work is negative 349.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, is it okay that it's negative? That negative just means, you know, it's work out, and that is work out that we're looking for. So the work output of the turbine, 349.8 kilojoules per kilogram. <clears throat> Next problem. Steam enters an adiabatic diffuser <clears throat> at 150 kPa and 120 degrees C with a velocity of 550 meters per second. Determine the minimum velocity that the steam can have at the outlet when the outlet pressure is 300 kPa. So, <clears throat> uh, my, I've got a diffuser, steady flow device. Look back at our conservation of energy. Uh, it's adiabatic. There's no Q. There's no W. Uh, so it ends up that the work, the enthalpy in 
plus velocity n squared over 2. Now, I might be, be careful with my units. Might need to divide that by 1,000. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Divide by 1,000 equals the enthalpy final plus V2, the velocity at the exit, uh, divided by 1,000, right? So <clears throat> I'm looking for V2. I'm looking for the velocity at the outlet. Uh, so I'm going to need to... Okay, I've got V1. Uh, I think I could figure out H1. I I'm going to need to figure out all of these other um, things in the equation so that I can find V2. So let's look at state 1. State 1, 150 kPa, 120 degrees C. That's really all I need. I could find H1. And, spoiler alert, let's go ahead and find entropy. Let's go ahead and find entropy. So pause this, look at your property tables, see if you can find enthalpy and entropy for state 1. I've got 27... 2711.4 kilojoules per kilogram and 7.2699 kilojoules per kilogram K. And state 2. What do I know about state 2? I know that the pressure is 300 kPa, but I don't know anything else. I'm not told anything else. But you probably already knew this. It is adiabatic, and we're trying to find the, the minimum, you know, if this was the best, best diffuser we could ever get, what is the minimum? What's the extreme value? What's the theoretical limit? This minimum is insinuating that what is the reversible process, and if it is adiabatic and reversible, then it is isentropic so and if it is isentropic then s2 is the same as s1 so s2 is also 7.2699 kilojoules per kilogram K now take those to your property tables um, you know is it still superheated might have to interpolate uh, in order to get h2 see if you can do that I calculated that H2 was 2845.7 kilojoules per kilogram K. And so now I can plug everything into my equations. H1, 2711.4. I'm going I'm to leave, well, kilojoules per kilogram plus V1. V1 was 550 meters per second squared over 2, uh, but that would just be joules per kilogram. You need to divide it by 1,000 so that it's kilojoules per kilogram. And then H2, 2845.7 plus V, which I don't know, V squared over 2 divided by a thousand and then I've got see if you get this v2 184.1 meters per second